Welcome everyone to the first episode on my Let's Play series for the game Final Fantasy 3 or 6, depending on what country you're from. And here we are, we're about to get started on it. Boom, look at that. Awesome, right? Okay, 1994 Square Company. License to buy Nintendo. Let's uh, jump right into this. Uh, now I started a game here, more of a test play. So let's uh, get this thing going from the beginning. Don't be difficult, just record. We be Okay, it's time for our opening cinematic. You may think things are a little bit different in this series because, well, for one thing, you can see me. That's a little bit of a change. I decided to set up a webcam, and for this LP series, at least a few episodes of it, I'm going to have this cam set up in the bottom corner of the screen. I've seen other people do it. I figured I'd just give it a try. Now, Final Fantasy 3 or 6, I'm probably going to end up calling it... Uh, Six. Although, don't uh, don't bite my head off if I accidentally say three every once in a while. Final Fantasy VI was the last Final Fantasy game created for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in 1994. This is about uh, what three years before Final Fantasy VII popularized the genre with the West. And I'd say this is probably the best of the classic Final Fantasy games, and it's the one that most strongly stands the test of time. And one of the things I like to point out right now in the beginning is this opening sequence that we're seeing, and these are the opening credits that are going on, and you get to see these Magitek soldiers approaching this town. Now, back in the SNES, there, it, the machine wasn't powerful enough to display like pre-rendered video or anything like that, so it couldn't have big powerful opening sequences like you saw in the seventh game in the series, and they they just couldn't do something like that. But what they had the ability to do was something called Mode 7, which was a which was a programming feature on the SNES that allowed you to take a two-dimensional object, sort of position, or make it look like it was being changed with its position relative to the camera. Now, it was two dimensions, but it had the ability to make it look like it was done in 3D, or at least gave a semi-convincing effect. This was before the uh, Super FX chip actually gave the SNES practical 3D abilities, but this was still pretty cool. I
Okay, we are playing as three soldiers of the Empire. Yeah, I know. Creative, huh? And we are assault assaulting this town because we're looking for something called an Esper. Now they're... Oh, Imperial Magitech Armor. And we're invading a town called Narsh. I'm going to call it that, whether it's pronounced right or not. Now, uh, we have active time battle, just like we saw in some of the earlier and later games in the series. And you see down there we have progress bars that fill up. Now, as that, uh, as they fill up, we, uh, our characters gain the ability to attack, heal, use items, whatever. But we have three characters using Magitek armor. Now, in this game, there is really no such thing as magic anymore. At least that's the idea. There was a War of the Magi, like, a uh, thousand years before the start of the game. And in the process, magic was destroyed. Now, the Empire appears to have created machines capable of, uh, sort of faking magic, or it's like a synthetic kind of magic. And that's what the Magitek armor is. We have all of these different magic abilities that our characters can use. And our question mark girl here is, uh, appears in the beginning of the game, though, strangely enough. And she has the ability to naturally use magic herself. Which makes her an enormously powerful person. And there, the Empire has gone and places the Slave Crown on her head, which is going and controlling her actions. And they're using her to assault this town. So that's how that's what's going on here. Now you notice because she has a natural ability to use magic, even when using the magic tech armor, she is, has increased number of attacks that she can do. And when it comes time to, uh, if she, you don't feel like using the magic tech abilities, she can go and cast attacks, cast a fire or healing attack using just her natural abilities. Now we have two characters here, Wedge and Vix. I believe the there was a re-release of this game for the PlayStation back in, I guess, 99? Yeah, it must have been 1999. And, I mean, I, I never played it, but from what I hear, it renamed this character Vix to Biggs, kind of like the Star Wars character. A reoccurring theme that you'd seen in... The Final Fantasy games, where they name these characters after the Star Wars characters, Biggs and Wedge. It happened in 7, 8... Did it happen in 9? Yes, it did happen in 9. 10, I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if it even happened in 5, but, you know, I'm not even sure I ever even played 5. But 4, I did play 4. 4 was part of that collection, and I... I did play the version of 4 that came out for the PlayStation. But, uh, it, uh, never, I never got to, uh, 6, because, well, I already played 6, and 4, which the other game in the collection was a game that had never been released in the U.S. at the time. So, that was quite a long time ago. And, come to think of it, aside from the quick little test play that I'd done, and you saw that on my, uh, load select screen, I haven't actually played this game in a long time. How long? It's hard to think. It must have been, uh... Well, I stopped playing the SNES back in... Well, I mean, I put my Super Nintendo back away back in 1997. That's when I got my PlayStation. I know I didn't play the game before then. Oh, I'm sorry. I played the game before then, but I didn't play this game after that, even after I brought my Super Nintendo back out of storage. Probably 96. Jeez, what year is it now? It's 2013. <laughs> 17 years! Damn! 17 years it's been since I played this game, other than the little test that I did earlier. You know what that means? Okay, we're going after the experts in, in the mind chat. Now, I, d I did discover that I had forgotten a lot more about this game than I thought I had. 
when I was playing through my test play, I came to the conclusion that uh, I really didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> so, it's not like I'm playing through this game blind. I'm not playing through this game completely blind. But, I, uh... It's about, probably about as close as that as you can get. I remember the basic story, I remember the... Like... You go to this town, and you go to this town, and you do this stuff, but I don't really remember how it goes through. And I can't, to be honest, I can't even remember some of the characters' names. That is really going to be bothering me. Save point. Yep. Yep, okay. Yes, I get it. Save. Let's go save over this, because, you know, I'm not going to be playing that one. So moving on. Ah, there's no point in going exploring around. We got a lot of power here. Let's go kick some ass. Hey, a repo man. All the enemies in this area are so weak that you don't really have to worry about choosing your attacks. You just have to heal every once in a while just to make sure you don't die. But just feel free to go and use fire attack on everything. Even if Terra has, like, that tech missile, which is by far the most powerful ability at this point in the game. Okay, the game froze for a bit. Okay, I had a little bit of a problem there. The game froze up on me. I'm using Fraps to record the gameplay. But I'm using my webcam on the Logitech webcam software to record the video of me as well as the audio of me talking. You're ordinarily, I would use a uh, separate microphone that I would uh, record my audio on. I'm also, uh, just so you know, I'm using a PlayStation 2 controller plugged in by a USB port to my computer in order to uh, use as a gamepad rather than keyboarding everything like a lot of people would do with an emulated game. Oh, uh, SNES 9X is the version, is the emulator I'm using, version 1.53, just in case you want to know. Okay, moving on. Okay, Vix, handle this. Okay, we're through. Let's move on. Oh, guard. Won't hand over the Esper. What is this Esper thing they keep talking about? Boss battle time against the Welk. It's a gigantic snail looking thing. Is that one of those snails that gives people meningitis? Okay, do not attack the shell. This is the first boss battle of the game, and you're gonna have to, uh... Oh, wow. Make sure you attack the right portions. So, for example, uh, let's go and use Tech Missile, because that's the most powerful attack we have right now. Slime! Ew. Aww. Check that out. Boom! Damage. Now the snail is going to retreat into its shell, and if we were to attack the shell now, which is our only option, which I'm going to do here just to demonstrate, it'll retaliate with some horrible, horrible, uh, against everybody. Do quite a bit of damage. So just don't attack the shell. Let's do some healing just to get ourselves back up to, uh, to speed here. Let Terra just rest up a bit so she'll be immediately able to attack once the thing sticks its head out. Okay, there it goes. Get back over to question mark girl. I accidentally said her name. Uh and do some crazy damage. Look at that damage. Boom! As long as you stay on your healing and you don't attack the shell, this boss battle is nothing. As a boss battle in the beginning of the game should be. 
shouldn't be difficult. Okay, I'm just gonna have my characters defend. Actually, there's no real, real point to that doing that right now, because the, the snail will not attack while its head's in the show. All I've done is reset my active time battle bars. Not a good idea, really. But it, you know, who cares. Okay, come on. Sticky. There we go, come on. Take him out! Now, I'm gonna throw a couple of extra attacks at him. Just for, for fun. Boom! Dead. Yeah. Got one potion. Everyone loves a good potion. What? Another enemy? That quick? Kind of takes all your thunder out of just taking out the boss if you get pulled into a battle against these little bastards here all of a sudden. That is such a downer. A downer, I say. Now, the way it's going to work is I'm going to be end up cutting out a lot of these repeated battles. Now, the way I would do it before, back when I was just recording, using fraps to both record the gameplay as well as my audio, I would turn off the camera at the start of a battle like that so I wouldn't have to edit around it. In this occasion, though, since I'm using both a webcam and this to record two separate video streams, I have to go and fight through the entire battle with the camera recording, and I'll be editing through this afterwards. That way I can keep everything synced up. So I'll have a little bit better control over what battles I make you watch and which ones I don't. Just a little bit more work, that's why I'm not usually doing something like that. Okay, moving on. Oh, jeez, dungeon keeps going. Oh, mm, that must be the Esper. Oh, it's frozen. Oh, we're gonna fight it. Tritoch. She hasn't said anything yet. How'd you get that idea? Holy hell! Wedge is dead. Oh, damn. It's getting out of hand. 